So, so I wanted to get back to sort of talking about um, a place where we fundamentally agree, which is the reality of consciousness. So, right. um, you know, uh, my own history, if, in case anyone cares, is I started out when coming to this as kind of a, du a, a dualist, um, a substance dualist, actually, uh, uh, because of considerations about consciousness and the Cartesian kinds of arguments um, having to do with uh, conceivability of mind without body. And I gradually came to reject that, although not 100%, but because my credence in it was gradually lowered because of you know causal considerations, which I think is pretty standard um, dichotomy between those, the standard dichotomy between dualism and materialism. On the one hand, there's the people who take consciousness very seriously, and on the other hand, there's people who think, well, it's gotta be fitting into the causal structure of the world somehow because it does something. Uh, so I kind of became uh, more in that camp. And, and I don't want to defend physicalism in the sense that I want to claim that it's true. Rather, what I want to argue is that we don't have any good reason to think it isn't true. Uh, yeah. So that's a slightly lower claim than trying to say, well, I know, we know physicalism is true and that all the other views are wrong. But anyway, so um, where we fundamentally agree is, is this diehard commitment to the realism of consciousness. Great. Um, yeah. And so, and, and that seems to me to be an area where like for instance, illusionism and these other kinds of views that give up the game right off the bat uh, yeah. by, by, by saying, oh, look, we're not talking about the same sort of thing that you guys are talking about, like me and you, for instance, they, they want, they're not talking about consciousness as given to us in our experience, but something else. They, and that sounds like they're changing the topic or redefining the, the terms of the battle. So, right. so that I, I want to be very clear that I think that they're, they're just not really good reason for denying consciousness. So, so I wonder if you could tell us what your reasons for commitment to the reality of consciousness. Is it just introspection or is it something more? Yeah, it's a good, well, just on illusionism, I mean, having, I completely agree with everything you just said, but I'm probably more open to illusionism than many of my anti-physicalist colleagues in the sense of taking it seriously and um, not thinking it's just obviously incoherent so illusionism being is roughly the view that consciousness doesn't exist that it's and the brain creates an illusion that it exists when it doesn't really Keith Frankish for example defends this view Daniel Dennett seems to at times but um so a lot of people a very common reaction to it is for people to just say well, this can't be true because, you know, who is subject to the illusion? You know, you need consciousness to have an illusion in the first place. So it's just straightforwardly contradictory. Galen Strawson says this, for example. Um, but I, I think that depends. And I wrote this in, a, there was a special issue of Journal of Consciousness Studies on, on Keith Frankish's illusionism and I had a paper. It depends what you think about thought or mental representation. I guess still the dominant view in analytic philosophy is that thought and mental representation, or at least thought, uh, are sort of are distinct from consciousness? You know, you can see that the main, the, the dominant theories of consciousness in the 20th century, like by Fodor or Davidson, didn't mention consciousness at all. So, if that, if we can make sense of mental representation or thought independently of consciousness, then it seems to me illusionism is perfectly coherent because you can say, or it's not obviously incoherent. You can say, you know, we we think there's consciousness, but there isn't. And that makes sense if thought is independent. I mean, as it happens, I, I am one of the growing minority who thinks thought and mental representation is a kind of consciousness. So I do think ultimately that it's incoherent, but you know, that's a, that's a contentious view. Um, but so, so I'm kind of open to take it seriously. And David Chalmers got a very interesting new paper on, on this stuff, taking exclusionism seriously. And um, we had an interesting conference on it um but um but in terms of coming back to your question well it's just a question of starting points really i mean a lot a lot of analytic philosophers think you know our only source of data about reality is empirical in the sense of third person observation and experiments but that's and everything else has to be justified in terms of that or accounted for in terms of that um but you know, I mean, we all know that even that data is not certain. You know, it's there's all sorts of skeptical arguments. And there seems to me, you know, it's not obvious that that's the only starting point for knowledge. 
And it seems to me the evident reality of, you know, I think Descartes got one thing completely right, the evident reality of my own feeling. I mean, to take an obvious example, you know, I'm in pain and I think, attend to my pain and I think, I'm, I think I'm feeling like this. It seems to me that that is known with a greater certainty that I really am feeling like this than anything else. So that seems to me much more evident than that there's a table in front of me. It seems to be more evident. You know, so I'm, I, I wouldn't say 100% certainty about any of this, but I think Descartes was right that the mind is better known than the body. The, the reality of conscious experience is more evident than the reality of the external world. So why would I, why would I start with the external world? And so in a way, you know, the, at least they should be on a par. You know, the third person observation experiments on the one hand. In a way, I do want to take them on a par. You know, my... How do we do metaphysics? Sorry, I'm jumping from one thing. How, do we, do yeah, How do we find out the nature of reality? A lot of analytic philosophers think, well, just take third-person observation experiments. What I want to do is take third-person observation experiments, absolutely crucial, you know, to respect what the empirical data is telling us. But there's another source of data, the evident reality of consciousness. And I see the project of metaphysics is trying to find, you know, the simplest most parsimonious theory that it accommodates both. So even if you, you know, if you had a theory, people talk about the grand unified theory that physics is hoping. If you had a theory that accounted for all the data of third person observation experiments, that still wouldn't be enough because there's, there's another piece of data we need accommodating the evident reality of consciousness. So they both seem to me at least on a par. And um, so we need to accommodate both. Unless, until we get overwhelming reason to think consciousness is an illusion, but I don't buy any of the arguments. Yeah, so that, that, I, mean, I guess that's my starting point. Um, I talk about this actually, the, the, I think the chapter in my book I'm most interested in, I, I like best, is the final chapter. I talk about sort of methodology and talk about this kind of thing and, uh, and how um, the datum of consciousness is hugely neglected in metaphysics more generally. You know, people just, and... Um, you know, how do we do metaphysics? It seems to me we've got this thing we know exists and um, and I would argue that, you know, we sort of know its nature. And so using that as a source of data in metaphysics more generally. And, um, but yeah, that's my starting point. We've got two sources of data. We need to put them together. Right, and I, I, I can agree with that. That I guess my question would be what it means to accommodate the data. So yeah. uh, I, of course I want a theory of consciousness that accommodates first person data. Um, uh, the question I, w I guess I would ask is, does it, in order for that to be successful, is it beholden to our common sense, um, <clears throat> kind of apprehension of consciousness or that, so there's going to have to be some level of revision at some point, it seems to me, yeah. no matter which way you go. And that opens the door to at least some kind of weak version of illusionism, right. not the strong version, which says that consciousness doesn't exist in the sense that we think that it does, but the weaker version, uh, which I think Chalmers actually distinguishes in his kind of new paper, The Meta Problem, yeah. um, where, where he talks about, look, you know, there's gotta be some elements uh, which we attribute to our conscious experience which uh, might fall away in a final theory of it. Yeah. Uh, and so in that sense, we're all, uh, every theory is committed to some version of illusionism because there's no way to accommodate it just as, I mean, I think for instance, even Russellian monism is gonna end up saying something like this with respect to, um, well, it depends on the version. I know we'll get to this later, but with respect to whether or not the micro particles and their elementary forms of consciousness or whatever, uh, those things aren't available to us in introspection. So there's got some sense of illusion there, possibly. Uh, are you open to that or would you resist even yeah. that kind of weak? Yeah, it's a really good question. How exactly characterize the, date, the, the datum? And I would do it like this. I would say, yeah, I'm very much open. That I don't think we're infallible about all aspects of consciousness and we make mistakes, and especially when we start theorizing. Um, you know, it might be a bit like, is it, is it, was it Augustine said about time? Yeah. You know, we know what, we know it, what is. it is until we think about it or we theorize about it. About it. You know, I think consciousness <laughs> be like that. You know, I think we, you know, we, we sort of, even when we do get it right pre-theoretically, then we start thinking. So, so what the data is, I would say, um, think about um, what philosophers tend to call phenomenal concepts. I prefer to call them experiential concepts, maybe a bit more of a sort of accessible term. People always think it means phenomenal, like extraordinary. When you talk to non-philosophers, they, you know, phenomenal concepts. Anyway, 
so these are the kind of concepts you form when you attend to your experience and you just think about it in terms of how it how it what it's like or how it feels i'm in pain i just attend to my pain and i form this concept you know feeling like this not even those were you know just just you form a concept that's wholly based on attending to the state i would say consciousness realism is the view that those concepts are satisfied that they genuinely mirror reality 